Based on the channel analytics, it's pretty clear that you folks like listening to me talk about home theater gear. So good news. In this home theater builder, I'm talking about speakers. So speaker selection for home theater is an absolutely wide open choice. There are so many brands, models, form factors, and combinations, along with plenty of positioning and speaker count considerations for what you can do and what you might want to get out of your room. So I'll focus more here on the thought process behind what I chose for my room and the various whys and the driving questions behind it. Hopefully that'll help you as well. So in my space, I run a 7.2.4 configuration. That means a front, left, center, and right channel. There are two side surrounds that flank the couch, two rear surrounds about three feet behind the couch, two subwoofers, but I'll cover subwoofers specifically in a future builder video separately, and then finally four height speakers for the immersive audio. As mentioned in my prior videos, and just for relevance or reference, I drive all these speakers with the Marantz AB7704 preamp and an Emotiva XPA11 Gen3 amplifier, all using monoprice speaker wire. The specific speakers in use are Focal Electra 1038 BEs for the front left and right towers, a matching Focal Electra 1008 CC for the center, and Focal Aria 906s for the four surround and four height positions. So let's talk why 7.2.4. My room is roughly 18 feet by 16 feet, give or take a few inches, with close to an 11 foot ceiling. While Atmos and immersive audio are made to be positionless and object-based, the reality is 724 is still the gold standard, I would say, for home use and for which content is generally encoded and built. 11 channels are the main count for premium level processors and amplifiers. Seven bed channels is the top for non-immersive encoded content as well. As soon as you go over this threshold and start adding wides, more surrounds, six or more channels overhead, you're now really in a whole different tier of home theater and you really need bigger rooms, multiple rows, and a whole lot more expensive processing. That was all beyond my needs, beyond my space, and beyond my desire to spend regardless. So 7.2.4 is plenty for my room size and even quite a bit larger, I would say. Go more if you can and if you want to, but be aware you're really taking a major step function in complexity and cost to do so. So why did I do heights and not overhead speakers for my immersive channels? Is an Atmos supposed to be over top? Well, yes, ideally, but my decision was more based on the room logistics. As I've discussed before, I didn't want to tear into or rebuild walls, drywall, or trim. So I wasn't running speaker wire in the ceiling to get to overhead speakers. The room also already had finished painted crown molding, that I left alone and left white as it was. So I couldn't effectively hide wire on the wall ceiling without jumping over the crown. I still probably could have made it look fine enough, but I just didn't want the hassle of it. Yes, overhead is better for sure, but the performance difference between real overheads and high heights wasn't something that I was really sweating for my space. Remember, I said I have close to 11 foot ceilings in there because our basement was poured so deep and we did a couple extra layers of brick or block on top of that. So my heights are actually very high, giving a lot of space for separation between the bed layer and the heights and lending to stronger immersive performance. If I were working in a basement where I only had seven foot or eight foot type ceilings, then I really might have worked harder to get my immersive channels directly overhead instead of going for the heights. Using heights though and the wall mounts that I found for them did provide one big benefit in allowing use of the same speaker for all of the surround layers and the height positions as well. So the same Aria 906 speakers are used in all of those spots, leading to a cohesiveness of sound and presence that choosing a smaller speaker from a third line maybe wouldn't have delivered the same way. So why Focal? I spent a lot of time looking at speaker brands. My first home theater experience that I built was with B&W. My living room in our current house was done originally with Triad, and I was reading and watching so many speaker reviews, I can't even remember it all now. But what I liked about Focal was the fact that they're a full speaker maker, designed in France, made in France, and Focal designs and builds both the speaker body and the drivers themselves. Many speaker makers today might do the chassis and the construction, but actually use third-party drivers. I really valued the hands-on completeness, and so that was a big draw to the brand for me. Now, the Electra and the Aria are not the super highest end of the Focal speaker lines, but that was a draw for me too. Focal makes some very, very expensive speakers. 
And even though I'm buying a bit lower down the line, I prefer to buy lower or mid-tier speakers from a company that makes stuff way above that level under the assumption that the knowledge and experience and techniques and so on going into that highest end product is trickling down to the lines and you're, able, you're actually getting a better speaker from the lower tier overall because their focus is all the way up that line. That said, the Elector was by no means a cheap set of speakers. Originally MSRP, a good bit over 10K a pair, I think something more like 13 or 14K a pair. At the time I bought though, the Elector was actually being phased out. And while I normally would always look to newer model gear and tech because of new features and advancements, that doesn't really apply to speakers per se. So I scored the front three Electras at something over 50% off the original MRP by taking the final stock. Still new and amazing, amazing speakers. And hey, they have beryllium tweeters. That was an important element in selling them to my wife. And for me, I knew my room was going to be focused primarily on home theater for movies and games. And those front three speaker positions really are the crux point of everything. Speakers are kind of like a screen as well, being a purchase that's going to last a long time. So I opted to really focus heftier spending on that part of the room and that part of the gear, but also snagging an incredible value at the same time. Given the cost, though, I knew I wasn't going to put Electra BEs through the eight remaining positions, though nor did I feel it was really necessary to spend that kind of money for those types of speakers. But I wanted to stay in manufacturer and be close to matching as possible, so the newer Aria line was perfect in that regard. Same brand, similar tone, and I scored all eight Arias from AccessoriesForLess.com on a crazy summer sale. Still brand new and had another like near 50% discount to MSRP. Speakers were probably the highest value for dollar spent of any element in my rooms in terms of how much I actually spent for what I was able to buy and put in there. So one point I want to dwell on a little bit is the idea that I in fact did go for big left and right towers in a definitive center. One thing I considered a lot given my bias to movies and games was just using bookshelves or the same model of bookshelf all around the entire room. That's a popular way to go in home theater movie centric spaces. I debated it but in the end I wanted the bigger more impactful full-size front array, even though music isn't a major part of my use cases for the room. But in the end, I'm really glad I did. Matching bookshelves would have rocked too, I'm sure. Just don't tell my wife that. But I have no doubt or any FUD in my mind anytime I use the room for any type of content that I'm getting the full force and impact from the main audio of this room. That satisfaction really means a lot to feel good about the space that I built and want to use it. In my room too, all my speakers are open air in the room itself. Since I wasn't rebuilding, I wasn't placing speakers behind an acoustically transparent screen or anything special in that regard. That would have brought in a whole different line of analysis and debate about what to choose and what to use had the room been operationally different in that type of way. So the big towers then just stand on the floor, of course. And I use a VTI RF series 13 inch cast iron stand for the center channel. This keeps the speaker just under the edge of the projection screen but it has a slight angle up, allowing the speaker to better address the couch seats. And I've never felt that having the center under the screen like this is a compromise in any way. Audio and speech are clear and they're anchored to the screen. It sounds like it's coming from the screen like it's supposed to. The side and rear surrounds are also on stands, also VTI, using RF series 36 inch cast iron stands in the same line as the center stand. I use the same line to have a cohesive style between all of the speakers that were sitting on the stands. The stands are also pretty nice. They have cable management allowing the speaker wire to go up inside the back leg and come out just under the speaker itself. These came from a site called standsandmounts.com which I found pretty good and had a whole wide variety of, of options for speaker mounting. The center stand was only about 70 bucks and the others were $300 a pair. The heights are wall mounted on a clamping bookshelf mount that I just bought from Wayfair for about $60 per pair. They have these extending adjustable arms that can tilt and pan and they ended up being a perfect match to the Aria design in terms of the way the speaker is made, where the baffle is, and how the clamps hold the speaker as well. So that's speakers and what a fun part of a room they are. But do your homework, set a budget, figure out what you need and what you can really fit and audition as much as possible if you can. Although I actually broke that rule myself and I bought the Focals unheard in person. But the review results, the pedigree of the brand, and all the research that I did, 
I felt confident enough to commit to those. So thanks for watching and make sure to like and subscribe to help the channel. We have so much more to talk about. And if you'd like to discuss speakers or get some recommendations for your space or situation, feel free to ask in the comments. Thanks.